I like scuba fans. Is ZX fan here, scuba hacker, Mark Jones. And what we're going to do today is we're going to do another pressure test, but this time we've undocked the Origins component from Mercator. Mercator's the float and Origins is the console. So this is a real test. We're going to go down to about 45 to 50 meters equivalent depth using a pressure pot, which is using air from a cylinder. So the cylinder's at 230 bar and the maximum we're going to put into this um, water filter actually is going to be maybe 4.55, not more than 5 bar, but 5.5 the pressure release valve will pop. And if you see that happen, it's going to be like the last video where I jump out the skin. So we'll try and stop that this time. So if you come over here and I'll show you what we're doing. So there we go, we've got our 230 bar fresh cylinder. Um, you can see at the moment it's at zero. So that means I've turned that off. So what I'm going to do is um, just show you what we've got here. So I've been sat here with the um, Origins console charging away. We've reached, are you able to see that? So what we're looking at, top number, green, that's how many meters depth we're at. So at the moment the um, sensor's just reading two centimeters minus, you know, within, you know, it's very small um, like, um, sort of uh, resolution. Then we've got the temperature, so 27.8 is actually more like the temperature where the, um, you know, close to the CPUs and stuff. This has been running for quite a while, charging the batteries, which is why we're at that temperature. The um, percentage humidity, again, 29 is really low. What's happening there is that um, the humidity is the same as it is in the environment around us, but because the temperature is much higher, it's relative humidity, so it will drop. We're not too worried about that. That's really for when we're in the water. We want to make sure there's no condensation. Now, this is a number underneath, millibars. This is really important because this is real atmospheric pressure here at the moment, or roughly what we are, 1,017 millibars. Um, what this is going to show is if we have any leakage into the enclosure, we'll see that atmospheric pressure increase. We don't really want to see that. We've never done this before, so this is our first live run. Underneath, I can see that our batteries are at 4.01 volts, which is nice. And at the moment, we've still got 88 milliamps of current going into the batteries. So um, we've got enough charge in here to do a good at least 15 minute test, hopefully more. And then underneath, we have our lovely little Nixie clock, which is currently showing the time. And what I'm going to try to do is change this so that, it, right, here we go. Cool. So can you see that? We've now got, if I bring that a bit closer, hard to see. I think that's, I think we've got that there. So what we've got is a, a count up timer. So effectively our testing is, start, is starting at around, uh, you know, we've got 20 seconds there at the moment. So that'll be a good indicator as to how long we've done this experiment and it's gonna show on the video. So that's cool. Right, so what we're gonna do now is take out this power, have a little look inside. This is how we look with all the silicon wires. This is the depth sensor. All right, he's free. Now this is why this is gonna be usable without the cable um, by snorkelers, for example, if they don't wanna use the cable. Um, of course, if you don't have the cable, it's gonna have a much shorter lifetime. And as you can see, I need to have a bit of fettling to get this together, because we're not all right, here we go, that's good. So we have to look around the edges, and you see that green cable there? That's all right. It's not getting into the seal. If you look around here, the yellow's fine. Again, this is all because we've got silicon wires which don't misbehave when we close the case. Okay, so um, you able to see the display again? Maybe if I angle it like that so that it's not reflecting the sky. Okay, so that's our starting position. Next, I'm going to put a Sunto Zoop. So this is a good entry-level dive computer. I've had this one for probably 12 years or more. Solid piece of kit. Now, what this is going to do is going to be another measurement of, of depth. And at the same time, it's going to scream and beep at us because it's going to think it's on a real dive, hopefully. Um, obviously, it's air rather than water, but hopefully it should realise that it should be working. So... 
40 meters, normally as an air, air breathing scuba diver, you cannot last more than four minutes before you get the bends if you stay down there, pretty much. So once I go more than four, meters, four minutes at 40, it's not gonna be happy, doesn't matter. We're actually gonna go to 50 or maybe even 55. So let's drop that into the canister. Um, we should be able to see it's currently sleeping and hopefully when the pressure comes in it's going to recognise and if it doesn't I might have to go and get some water just to activate it but it's obviously dry at the moment. Next we put in the Origins GoPro case. Has to go in that way around. Now my assistant here is uh, what we're going to have to try and do, so this is why I've mentioned about maybe going on the bench, but let's try it. So if we watch, if you watch what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to put this water filter cap on and then briefly, very brief, some um, update on, you know, just what each bit is, because we did cover it in the last one. Okay, so we've got a 200 bar cylinder, currently not energised, it's zero. Um, we've got a, pressure, a valve there, which I'm going to close. We've got a seven bar um, pressure release valve, which is our emergency valve. We've got a valve, uh, another emergency pressure release, which actually happens at 5.5 bar. So this guy is never going to get near its spec. And anyway, the spec for actually it blowing up would be way beyond seven. But we've got two forms of safety here. Right now, what we can do is turn on the gas. And at the moment, we've got our ball valve shut. The hiss means that the cable, the, um, the hoses are now pressurised. We don't have any air in there yet. I'm not going to put the, um, the I'm not going to open the valve too much on the cylinder because I don't need to. If you look at that, what have we got? Pressure, 230 bar. Normally one bar is atmospheric pressure. We've got 12 litres of volume in here. So that means multiply 12 by 230. You're talking about more than 2,400 litres of air crushed down into a 12 litre cylinder. This is a lot of air and, you know, they're built, they're built to withstand that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the ball valve. And if um, my friend watches the pressure sensor, right, we're just going to go up a little bit to one bar. And now we find out if this is working. And the funny thing is, it is not. So if you look at that, it's still showing 0 0.01 meters. Now it might be because it's not wet, because it does take the temperature as well. Okay, we might have to make things wet. In fact, we might have to, we might have to fill it with water. Because basically the dive computer turns on when it goes in water. <laughs> So, and also, it could be that the dive sensor, the side the sensor which is on the back of that, it's only meant to function in water. All right, let's put it up more. So if you watch the gauge again. Okay, and just remember, if we have a um, rapid unscheduled disassembly, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so look, neither of our sensors, we've got 0.01 meters still, and we've got nothing on the other one. So, let's support that. This is more fun now. <laughs> Still, this is water. The power and memory that it's never going to run out. Okay, are you running? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to have another go now. So what I've done is I've put water in here. And I'm kind of hoping now that that's going to activate the Zoop and also the pressure sensor, which I put onto the Origins console. Um, Whatever happens, we don't need the sensor on the Origins to actually work at the moment. I mean, it would be nice to, and I can investigate later if it's not working. But ultimately, the um, dive computer combined with the pressure sensor up there will tell it, the pressure meter, the analog one, will tell us what pressure we're working at. So I have, have got a little scare a minute ago because it started floating, and I thought, oh, have we got water going in? Well, of course, if water was going in, it would go the opposite way. So we need a half kilo weight on there to keep it down. And then, ooh, right, then we're going to put the top on. And remember, this is actually a water, a commercial water filter, so there's no issue putting water in there. And as for the uh, dive computer, well, that's where it's meant to be. 
underwater. So, right, not very convenient, unfortunately, because now we've got the pressure valve opposite direction to those, but we can live with that. So I'm gonna move. If you go over there, cameraman, to this side, you won't be able to see the, the displays from there. Okay, so I'm going to be controlling this by looking at the analog pressure meter here. And um, basically what I've got to do, it's not a perfect seal. So what I've got to do is basically regulate it so it keeps it at roughly the same meet, uh, depth. So I have no idea what this is going to do. So let's have a go. So at the moment I'm just turning on the cylinder a very small amount. And now I'm going to turn on the bullcock valve. Right. Okay. Ah. Our computer is operating. I've got a feeling it's not happy at the depth which we're pushing it to. So let's see what the depth is. Okay. So the Sunto says we're at 16.4 meters and I'm reading off the pressure which is on the analog gauge here and indeed it's saying about 14, 15, sorry, 1.4 to 1.5 bar or for our American friends, 20 PSI. Right. And you can see there, it's actually ticking down a bit. The reason for that is this ain't a perfect seal. In fact, I did wonder why the filter doesn't have metal inserts for screwing into, but we've got PTFE tape everywhere else, so we can live with it. That's good. Now, the thing is, what's the other sensor doing? Oh, the other sensor's working. So our blue robotic sensor is now working because it's wet. So the sensor's pretty intelligent. It's now showing 13.56 meters. The center shows 12.2. So of course, what we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to take a third reading somewhere else at a later date and um, see who's right. But yeah, don't know why the pressure sensor's not changing. I hope it hasn't locked up. Let's just see. Right. Okay, we're now 1.52. Bar, which is 40, we're at 40 psi now, 3 bar, and if I have a quick look, okay, Suntos happy at 34.1, unfortunately it looks like our little Makata has decided to freeze, so that's my programming, my software obviously isn't very good for this, but this is the first test and actually we don't care, all we care about is that it doesn't have water in it, that it doesn't implode, and we're going to use the Sunto to basically tell us exactly what pressure and depth we've got. It's screaming us at the moment because it thinks I'm diving at 56 meters. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what happened there, but basically I did say it was at 56 meters, didn't I? Well, this pressure thing pops at 55 and I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't aware that it was at that point because I was looking at the damn thing here. Okay, you can see we're losing a bit of pressure because I haven't, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, heart rate's gone up a bit. And so uh, pressure's going down a bit because we've got a bit of loss. But I'm going to be very careful this time and not be quite such an idiot and pay attention, Jones, come on. Scuba hacker has to go through these pain points to work out exactly how this stuff works. Sunto Zoop is so annoyed with me now, it's going to lock me out from diving for 48 hours, at least. And that's why I'm not using my fancy technical Sunto device, because I want to go diving tomorrow. And to go diving, I want to have my fancy dive computer, which has got the AirPod connected. And it would deny me that if I did that, because that's what happened last time. So let's see, I'm playing with the... Right, I'm not going any higher. So it's thinking we're at 47.3 metres. It's a lovely maximum of 56.5. The origins code is obviously croaked. And I did see this yesterday when I was demonstrating to someone else, but I thought it was just something, uh... Oh, it's gonna be so funny when my mates see that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, can we see what the time is? No, we can't. Okay, so that's a bit worrying. Our second one has stopped working. Um, don't know why that is. Of course, we don't know what the internal... Pre Ooh, look at that. So, we have actually got 1,058 millibars within that enclosure. Hmm, I don't think that's atmospheric pressure anymore. Um, I think that's outside the realms of um, 
current world records. Anyway, let's not care. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the uh, leak detector is actually running off the device that's currently off. So, um, oh, oh, we get to 29.42. So some, for some reason, it's woken up a bit. <laughs> oh man, I, I, right, I'm just going to sit here and watch the analogue and if my friend here keeps an eye on the Sunto, I'm going, my job, ooh, my job is to A, stop it from popping and B, keep it at a nice, um, a nice meterage depth, what sort of word is meterage, um, so my friend is a little shy, but I'm going to ask him if he can tell me what the Sunto says in depth. So would you like to tell the world your number? Currently 45. 45, cool. So that's, that shows 4.5 bar on the, um, on the analogue. And of course, when we're taught diving, we would consider 45 metres to be actually 5.5 bar. And the reason for that is because you have one bar of atmospheric pressure. However, this gauge starts at naught because we don't care about atmospheric pressure. So that's why it's only showing me 4.5. And now I've got it almost equilibrium between the loss of air, which is inherent in something in this design, and my ball valve opening. I just relax a bit, that might help because I'm actually really tense at the moment. Okay. That is pretty stable, and I'm going to let it go for a minute. Of course, we can tell how long we've been going, because the, um, the GoPro has been done in one take. And actually, my friend here has got the ability to put it on a little tiny tripod, so actually, he might get a bit of a break. He might be able to get me a little drink. And uh, unfortunately, we're finding the grass a little bit of a pain to get a steady do you want something to put it on? We use the Madeira magnet, fridge magnet. Um, we've got that, we've got another tool there. Okay, so our dive sensor is definitely something a bit off. 29.42. But I know that the guys at Blue Robotics, given the amount of documentation that they get, I have good confidence that they'll be able to help us work out what is happening there. And actually, look at that Sunto. We're sticking at 46.4 metres, well, 46.5, which means that the incoming air matches the outgoing air. So we've compensated for the inherent leaks that we've got in this, uh, in this pressure pot, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to leave it rolling. And uh, I'm going to cut the video, unless something untoward happens, which of course you'll need to see. And I'll keep an eye on it, and we'll just see how long... Uh, I would love to run it for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and Soup just didn't like me saying that, it just buzzed again. Uh, 20 minutes to half an hour, and then we're going to go to New Malden and have a wonderful Korean restaurant meal. So New Malden is only a couple of miles from here, and it's actually pretty much, I think, the biggest um, population of our Korean friends in the whole of the UK. So um, that's going to be awesome. We're going to have, uh, what, is it, what is it called? Chimac. So apparently it's called Chimac and it's um, fried chicken, beer and chips. Chips. I had it once in New York and it was awesome. I've never had it here. I've only had a Korean barbecue here. So um, yeah, that's going to be good. So it's actually going to be dependent on my friend's rumbling tummy because he might come over to me and tell me you've got to stop now. I'm looking at this Sunto warning and we've got a 5k video here so I'm kind of hoping I can zoom in on it because I can see it's quite a small display. I can go a bit nearer and first of all it tells me that I've got to do a safety stop at three meters. Thank you Sunto. Um, I think that's the least of my concerns. Um, it tells me to stop at 15 meters which is odd because I would have thought it would have been ah maybe it's not 15 maybe it's something else. I've got, a fe I've got a feeling it's telling me I've got to stop at 15. Someone else who knows far more about technical diving than I really want to know can tell me what that means. Maybe I should read the manual. And then it's flashing 
ASC time. So maybe that means it's 15 minutes of time I need to go up. 16 degrees Celsius. Ah, this is interesting. So if you look now at the the Origins uh, Mako, which is a sharp name, the navigation unit, which is currently in a mode for just doing this test, is now showing 46 meters. So maybe our sensor has just got a low update, right? Or maybe my code is rubbish. Um, if you look at the temperatures, the Sunto is saying 16 degrees, the Origins are saying 20, and I'd say the difference is due to the, um, it's the fact the CPUs are obviously running, two CPUs. And importantly, look, 1114 millibars inside the case. So when we've finished, we're going to open up the case and see if we've got any condensation. Ah, what's that over there? Looks like a bit of condensation and just see if we've got any leaks because the leak detector as i said runs on this guy and that guy's given up the ghost oh, i do not know why um what else have we got here we can see hopefully we've got 3.56 volts left on the battery for the mako one here and we've got minus 140 that means 140 milliamps being consumed from the tiny tiny battery inside which i think might be the same capacity so in theory, it should go for an hour, but we're not going to do that. We're hungry. So what else can we see? 20 degrees, it thinks it's there. 16, dive time of 10 minutes. Frankly, if I was on air at this point, I would be very, very worried. So what I'm going to do is that is so stable, I'm just going to leave it and stop talking because I want to have some, do something else for a minute. Cool. Right. 20 minutes, and then what's the time now? Um, 10 past 6. Right, if we do 20 minutes, then that'll be... That'll be wicked. That means it's been, it's able to work at half an hour at 46 metres, which is... It is going to be like seven times longer than anyone can stay at 40 metres doing recreational diving. Basically, it's down to that Chinese case actually being way, very well made. Mm. In fact, it's probably the same company who makes the GoPro ones. <laughs> probably. Because it's what it is. It's... I mean, it's polycarbonate and it's just the mould, really. We had a, we had a, 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 dual, a dual video going on. Oh no, don't have my arse coming out. <laughs> oh seriously? Steve, I hope you haven't got my arse in the entire thing. No, we, we panned around so you can cut it. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, but, oh. oh, Steve, you could have told me, you know, I would have just moved, would have I would up. raised, I would have <laughs> tightened my belt. That's quite funny. Um, right, so I think that's awesome. The fact is, that is so well balanced now, it hasn't changed its pressure still. It's still 46.8. You know what? I, I never leave, thought I could. leave it like this now? Yeah. Just leave it. Right, let's go. Um, well, not, I'm not leaving when you go to the restroom. Oh, that's a place where we're going. <laughs> I might be a bit of a problem. The neighbours might object to me keeping something there, which could, you know. But what we'll do is we'll get this 10 past 6. Okay. I'm going to give it 20 minutes. Okay. And we can go. So what I'll do is I'll get, I've got my keys. Are you going to go in your car? Or, yeah. Or we're we'll going to walk? We'll go in the car. Okay. So 20 minutes. Um, if that chicken place hasn't got any space, which I doubt, there will be a problem with another one, or whatever. Okay. I quite like this YouTube lot. <laughs> I've never done it before, man. I'm just, I'm just in my element. It's still at 46.8. That's nice and settled, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I didn't, when I, when I was having the leakage last time, I just thought, oh no. But actually, it's not a problem at all. Not a problem at all. And actually, if I did have the other one in there, it would tell me how much air has been consumed. Mm. But I've got better things to do tomorrow and see that it's locked me out. <laughs> so it's done, I think it's saying it's done 13 minutes. So I think it's like a boiled pot of water. It takes longer if you watch it. Mm. So shall we leave it and then, um, mm -hmm. do you want to, just think, do you want to, I want a bit of bread because I'm just a bit hungry. Do you want to? 
down. Well, in the, no, but in the enclosure. You shouldn't do either of them. Well, you've got it turned off at the moment. I thought you had it trickling. trickling no, 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 no. So the pressure, not in here, but inside the enclosure. It's the atmospheric pressure inside the enclosure. So that's now... Oh, it's gone off. So actually it doesn't matter because what I'm interested in is that it doesn't leak. Mm. Basically the battery's run out. Oh. Mm. Well, we're on... 27 minutes. So we'll give it... We'll give it three minutes more. My dive fins. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually plug that into the computer afterwards and it will show the profile. And actually it would show the concentration of nitrogen in the blood as well. It's not going to be very safe. It's going to be quite miserable, in fact. And what I'm going to do... Excuse me, people are listening because I'm chewing so I haven't had some bread. Because we're hungry. And now we're waiting for just the last two minutes. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to really punish this zoop. And we're going to take the pressure quite quick down. And we'll just see how it reacts. And this is like the equivalent of a diver having a rocket pack going up. Because it's certainly quicker than if you just uh, dropped your weights. So, 16 degrees. That reflects the water temperature. You don't know what's going on on the top because it's run out of battery. Then, when this is finished, all we're going to do is open up the case. I'm going to wipe it down, open up the case, visual check that there's no drops of water, and visual check that there's no condensation. <coughs> and frankly, at this pressure, if there is a bit, I don't really care. Because what I'll do is I'll also connect it to the power supply and make sure that it still works, and that that isn't just it's broken versus the batteries run out. Mm -hmm. 29 minutes. It's now telling me that I have to spend 73 minutes going up, otherwise I'm not going to be in good shape. It would be a majestic diver who could last for 12 litres at this. I mean, I think They'd have to be in stasis or frozen to be able to survive this. Either that or his buddy, or her buddy, would have a fast selection of 12 litre cylinders at that depth to swap over at. 81 minutes now you'd have to stay down for. And at 16 degrees, if you had a wetsuit, that would be pretty cold. 30 minutes, we're done. Right. Before getting overexcited, I need to make sure I do this in the right order. So I'm going to turn it off. But if I make this go the wrong way, it's going to suddenly pop and scare the scare the heck out of me again. So, right, shut that off. And actually, it's just going down on its own devices at the moment. It's not very happy. It's going to not like this, and especially not this. So I pulled the, my pressure release valve and I'd been pressing the button on the actual water filter. That was one hell of a popping up there. That really was one heck of a popping up there. So, right, we're done. And now that the Zoop is so annoyed, it's just saying error. It's saying, look mate, I cannot process what you've just done. I think you're not even alive to tell. So now, if you um, show, just watch the top of this. Mr. Cameraman, we easily take that off because we got down to zero. Toot sweets. Come on. I've never abused my Sunto Zoop in this way before. Right, pour the water out. Out he comes. Poor old Zoopy. He hasn't known what on earth to hit him. Right, forgive me, Zoop. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm just going to get a tissue to wipe the origin. It's annoying me. Right, so we've got that 
Got some kitchen roll just to finish off. Okay, so we're going to do a visual check. There's two things I'm going to check. One is, um, do we have any droplets in there? And the second one is, do we have any condensation? Condensation. So I'm looking around the edge. Do we have any fogging? No. So, ooh, no, that might be a tad there, but I don't think so. It might be hot glue. This is definitely all hot glue around here, so ignore that. It'll be much neater on version two. I'm looking at the lens, there's nothing there. We've got hot glue there. So it's looking pretty good. Happy with that. Right, let's open her up. Okay, so we've obviously got a bit of water on the top, so let's, before we open it, don't want to get any anything in there when we open it because that will be giving us false impression. So let's clean that seal as well. Now, this is interesting. So the pressure is actually, right, there we go. Okay. Wow. That's worked. The only water we've got is around the edge there where the seal is. Everything, everything is bone dry. I'm just putting the tissue around the, the white seal, which is also silicon, because you know, what matters is, has anything entered the enclosure properly? Is the electronics okay? It's a resounding yes. That is amazing. You know, when I said that I wanted to build the most innovative dive computer ever, I really believed it, but it's only when you see it still in one piece. The batteries ran out, so let's just check. Yeah, it's only when you see it in one piece after that test, an extreme test, which is never going to be done by anybody, especially a rec recreational diver. And it works. So now the only thing we need to check now is we hope, I hope, that the reason why the screens went off was just because the batteries ran out rather than them some having some weird problem. So what I'm gonna do is get, as I was doing earlier, I was charging it with the Sunto battery, which is uh, it's a really nice power pack. It's got two outputs. And I'll use one for the iPhone and one for this. They'll be sat in the float. So we've got that. Sunto's on. We don't have any switch. Let's hope the screens are on. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, what a relief. So um, obviously when it first turns on, it says no GPS, it starts up in its normal mode. The second one is trying to connect to my internet at the moment. It's just trying to connect to my iPhone, which is hotspots off. The top one must have somehow got on my home Wi-Fi very quickly because it's ticking over nicely. It's not doing what the bottom one's doing. Now this one will time out in a minute. And then we just want to see the clock, which will be about 10 seconds maybe. Maybe 15. No connection. Okay. Come on, Nixie clock. I've um, credited the person who wrote this Nixie clock. Right. Well, that looks a bit odd. So I haven't actually got anything on. Oh, there we go. Okay. So because it didn't connect to the internet. Ah. Now, that is odd. It looks like it's still in the mode which is count up, which I wasn't expecting. So that might have meant it just went into a deep sleep mode. Interesting. All right, so just a moment. So I'm just going to check that it go that the buttons still work by flipping it into the dive test mode or pressure test mode. So press those two buttons for a minute and we get into the secret auto shutdown off mode. And there we go. So we're back down to atmospheric pressure of 117 millibar. We're back to the temperature and humidity we'd expect. We're back to around zero, zero meters and our battery's charging. And our little lights are on the sensors, which means they're fully functional. Job done. Thank you, cameraman. I don't think you could have gone better than that. That's a win. Well, scuba fans, Makata makers, and Arduino artisans, that is how you make a dive computer work at 46 meters or whatever it was for half an hour. We're going to keep going. Watch more. Watch more. Bye bye.